for hundreds of years, the traveler way of life was one of ancient traditions and simple tastes. Then their world collided with the 21st century. With unprecedented access to the UK's most secretive communities. They don't like anybody knowing anything about them at all. They even have their own language. This series will take you to the very heart of gypsy life. Yay! Through the biggest celebrations in the traveller calendar. Very stressed. People not turning up on time, but that's gypsy's ways. Nothing never gets done properly. Tonight, You've lied to me right the way along the line, so how can I trust you? We discover racism towards gypsies is alive and kicking. I think this sign here should be reading, no gypsies. Call your gypsy or something, look at you, oh, you gypsy, scum. <laughs> but in true gypsy style, they're fighting back. We're proud and honourable people, and we won't put up with it. Despite often being shunned by the outside world, Gippos. the gypsy community refuses to let its spirit be broken. It's the word gypsy, isn't it? It's, it's, it as soon as you say gypsy, people dread the word, and I don't know why, I haven't got a clue why. We're, quite, we're just the same as anybody else. Facing prejudice at every turn, the travelling community often doesn't trust outsiders and is fiercely secretive especially when it comes to their weddings. No one knows this more than dressmaker Thelma Medin. All the years I've been working with travellers, when I first worked with them, I thought it was, why are they so secretive over everything? Why don't they tell you anything? They never give you a direct date. But since I've got to know them, you realise why they've got to be so vigilant. Because as soon as venues find out the travellers, they will cancel. They will give them all the excuses in the world, but they, they'll cancel on them. I need that. That's it, under skates in the car. Yeah. Thelma and her assistant Pauline are off to Northern Ireland to meet a traveller bride to be who is even more secretive than most. And she has every reason to be. When we went to Ireland last time, we booked into a hotel and we made appointments for everyone. When the manager found out there, there were travellers, he just stopped it. He come up and complained. These are decent people. They weren't like sort of uh, in club outfits or anything like that. They were just dressed normal like everyone else. In fact, a lot better. With a few diamonds on the boots. Yeah. You know, that doesn't, <laughs> you know, what does that say? You know, other minority groups seem to have found a voice and are now being heard. But with the travellers, no one listens. Thelma and Pauline are on their way to meet 17-year-old bride-to-be Priscilla. That's my engagement album. Priscilla became engaged two years ago at the tender age of 15. Oh my God, that's me. I hate them for Why, what's wrong with that? <laughs> no, I don't like them for I'm not happy to be. <laughs> Priscilla left school aged 14, having struggled to fit in. I didn't like school. Why not? I hated it. Oh, I hated it. I didn't like it whatsoever. Did you mix with settled people at school? Yeah, I had some friends, but I got bullied in that in school. Why? I don't know, it's just probably just being a traveller. That's probably why. I didn't like it. I left it very early. But I would have done beauty if I wasn't getting bullied and I would have stayed on, but I never liked it. I hated it. What do they used to say to you? Oh, just loads of names. No bullying. That's really it. I don't really want to say it on camera. Watch the whole <laughs> Having arrived at their hotel, Thelma and Pauline have arranged to meet Priscilla to show her the bridesmaids' dresses. They all 
also need to find out the date of the wedding from this very secretive bride. Now today, we hope she's going to, well, she's going to have to tell us because we're coming over to dress her, so she's going to have to give us the date so we can arrange. But I think this one's been about five dates up to now. Just doing the last final touches. <laughs> this isn't even your dress, this is your bride's name, come on. Priscilla has arrived accompanied by her mother, who's very private and insists on not being filmed. Turns out nice, haven't they? The small ones is just... They're beautiful. But I think they need something. Something more. I think they need a couple more diamonds or something here and here. It's really, really beautiful. All your room's getting done in this as well, in red and gold, yeah? Where sure. oh, you, you're having your wedding. Is yeah. it getting all dressed in red and gold? Did you have any problems getting your hotel? We did at the start, definitely. Did you? Definitely. Really bad. But they still don't know that we are travelling. They still don't know. They still don't know we're travelling. It's, it's, isn't that pathetic? So, they Do won't you... give them. No. We, got, we no. did have a, to a hotel booked and they cancelled on us. <laughs> Thelma is eventually entrusted with the date of Priscilla's wedding, but only away from the camera. She's even more secretive than any of the other brides because she doesn't want anyone to spill the beans and that they find out the travels and they cancel her wedding on her. Putting up with discrimination is nothing new for the travelling community stereotyped for hundreds of years and um, it's just coming from people who don't know us, haven't got a clue about us, just come to their own conclusions about us. Billy Welsh is an elder in the Romany Gypsy community. His family have lived in the area for generations, but to some of the locals, they're still outsiders. Sometimes you get the odd idiot in the pub and say, why, you lot, why don't you lot go back to where you come from? And I'll say, and how long have you lived here? And say, I've lived here for 25 years. So we've been here for 165, and we can prove it. <laughs> what have we done with this? Oh, it's good. Oh, it looks very nice. <laughs> People tend to be frightened of what they don't understand. And, the, and, and a lot of the settler community, they don't understand us, so they tend to give us an hard time. We've, we've, we, in the past, we've had a lot of abuse, and we've had a, we've had a lot of persecution. Our way of doing things is, if we can be very, very private, to leave us alone and we can get on with our lives. Yeah. Though they prefer to keep a low profile, once a year, Billy organises a huge gathering where gypsies don't have to hide themselves away, known to travellers across the world as Appleby Horse Fair. It's extremely important to us. That place, is, to our people, is literally sacred. It is, it is literally our Mecca. But this year, trouble awaits them. To avoid discrimination, traveller brides are very secretive about their wedding plans. With her wedding one week away, 17-year-old Priscilla is travelling over from Northern Ireland to collect her dress. Dressmaker Thelma and her team have been working night and day to get the bridal gown and eight bridesmaid dresses ready in time. There has also been a special request for a bridal version of a mini-me. Native to like Northern Ireland really is the mini-bride uh, and it's usually um, a favourite niece or their little sister and it's got to be identical to the bride but just a smaller version. Now I'm going to do this. This is my big reveal. Hold on. Ta -da! <laughs> For Priscilla, the wait is over to see the wedding dress she has dreamed of her whole life. <laughs> oh, she's crying. She's crying. <gasps> <laughs> Look at the mini bride thing. Have you seen a nicer one? No. No. <laughs> Disney fairy tales are a popular theme with traveller brides. 
Priscilla's dress design was inspired by the princess and the frog. Now. What time is the wedding? <laughs> I don't know, Julia. Do you know anything? Twelve or one. You definitely are getting married, aren't you? Definitely, hundred percent. Wouldn't be wearing this. <laughs> Do you want to see how you how you sit in it, love? Let me just show you. All you do is get over to the thing at the back like that. Yeah. Go. On. You feel it on the back of your knees. You feel it. Now sit. That's it. The date for Priscilla's wedding has changed several times because the family have had problems securing a venue. After I got engaged, we were booked at um, the wedding reception and they found out we were travelling and cancelled straight away. And said that, said that they had the, um, the we were redecor redecorating from September till after Christmas. So how could you redecorate that length in time? You had to do the whole hotel over again. But it's upsetting, yeah. It is upsetting because you know why they won't give it. You know in your heart why they won't give it. It's upsetting for the first couple of weeks and then you have to get over it sooner or later. As a result of the prejudice, Priscilla's mother doesn't want their current venue to find out they're travellers. Thelma has been told the date of the wedding, but the location remains a closely guarded secret. Not even the groom knows where it is. Nobody knows where it is. For her, it's so important that the secret's kept, that she, she hasn't even told us where it is. Um, and, you know, most of them do tell us, you know, because obviously we're going to go and dress her. We've got to know where to go. But she will not tell us, unknown certain times, where this venue is. She is terrified if somebody tells them that the travellers, that it'll be cancelled and, um, you know, a little girl will be devastated. <laughs> Every year, gypsies and travellers all across the country make the journey to the one place they know they will be accepted, Appleby Horse Fair. Romany Gypsy John will be making the trip in a traditional bow-top wagon. Appleby Fair to gypsies is like a double Christmas to the Toyota Appleby Fair. Young people go there to find themselves a wife and a husband. I met my wife on Appleby. Violet! What? Put the kettle on. John's wife, Violet, won't be joining him on the exclusively male road trip. But before he leaves, John requires her womanly touch. Right, that'll do. No, get up. Get up. The 100 mile journey to Appleby would normally take a couple of hours by car. Travelling by wagon, it will last almost two weeks. It's always good to be on the road. Travelling with my wagon, I love it. I'd just like to do it. I'd just like to move off and just keep going all the time, not come back. After just two hours on the road, John's hunger pains make him realise that life without his wife, Violet, has its drawbacks. I'll tell you what I could do. I could bring her to come in the car. She's got a big pan of stew, what she's done last night, tell her to warm it up and fetch it, couldn't I? Hello, what are you doing? I'm warm that dinner up and that, do that stew. We're only, we're only 10 mile away. Just uh, keep on the old road towards Weatherby. It says Bramham Corner. All right. Lovely. Bye. It's like meals on wheels, you see. <laughs> the wagon train makes an unscheduled stop to hold out until Violet arrives with some lunch. Easy, lad. Easy, lad. Ready. She's just warmed it up and come down with it. It's like a Chinese takeaway, but she's not Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, you need to go to Weatherby Roundabout then. You mustn't be on the old road. OK. She can't find us. She's lost. She's put them in there. Oh, this is more harder work than baking the food. Hello. Because I can't understand how you can't drive on a straight road. The men have now been waiting over an hour for their stew. This is my wife lost again. She's totally insane. 
Hello? Have you asked somebody where Wattle Site Roundabout is? You've found us. Right, OK. Violet finally arrives two hours later than expected. Oh. I only want a very small bit, Violet. Give me some bread. Oh. John's vision of the simple life is restored with a home-cooked meal and a shady spot to rest. Oh, that's better. Back in Northern Ireland, plans are coming together for the perfect white wedding. That's my room. But all is in here is dresses. 17-year-old Priscilla is three days away from her big day. That's underskirts, wedding top, hair pieces. Having collected her dresses from Thelma, she's worried her designs might be spotted before the wedding. Can you open that window? That window? I can't open it. Why not? The people that see my colours and my dress. <laughs> the travellers are behind us. So they'll peek through the window? They won't peek, but if they do, they'd see. They won't, they won't be that bad like I'm peeking. But if, they, if I open the window, they'll see the colours. The colours of your dresses? Yeah. My veil. And this is the best thing of all in here. You have something old, something new, something blue. The blue's always on your garter. Are you going to be a good wife? Hopefully. <laughs> it depends what he thinks of me. Have you been anywhere with him by yourself? I sat in our living room with him by myself. Chat. So that means that you've been quite well behaved. Yes, very well, very, very, very well behaved. <laughs> Romany Gypsy John has spent the night in a field next to a council estate. Now a week into his journey to Appleby, he has begun to face some familiar obstacles. We've just come 15 miles from Ingleton, where we would have normally stopped probably twice. Every inch and part of the road, every bit of a pulling, everywhere where anybody stops at all, with the awesome wagon especially, it's totally just blocked off. They've got it blocked off, they've got signs up. No park and no caravans. You can't, you can't pull up with your horse. When these horses get tired pulling these wagons, they're very heavy things. They've got to rest. The police is coming along, making you move. The people's coming, just deliberately walking up to you, being very racial and abusive. John is also becoming frustrated with new police parking restrictions on the approach to Appleby. We're beginning to climb up a mountain where people's got to pull on the side of the road to rest their horses. They've put all these things across to stop it. Every year, Appleby's surrounding pubs and restaurants must decide whether to stay open. In light of trouble caused by a few travellers in the past, one pub that has always welcomed them has closed its doors for the first time. John sees this as an attack on his culture. I think this sign here should be reading, bar closed, hotel guests only, and at the bottom it should, it should say, in all honesty, what it's put up for. No gypsies. They will not admit the truth and say, we don't want no gypsies. This is what they're doing everywhere. They've cordoned a hair year off to keep gypsies out and they've been coming here for hundreds, I don't even know how long it is, hundreds and hundreds of years. Due to travel to Northern Ireland to dress bride-to-be Priscilla, Thelma and Pauline have been hearing rumours that her mother Mary has lied to them about the wedding date. I just had a phone call and there's no wedding on the 30th. Really? No. That's the third phone call we've yeah. had then? And there's definitely a reliable source, yeah? A reliable source told me no wedding. 
I spoke to Mary this morning and she insists it's on the 30th. Mm -hmm. The dressmakers decide to investigate. It's just, I'm a bit stuck, you see. I've um, actually got a bride's dress to bring over to a wedding. You haven't got them? Definitely not the 30th of September. OK, bye, bye. It's either the 30th of September or October, beginning of October sometime. Pauline eventually gets hold of the one person who will definitely tell them the truth. Phil, I've just spoke yeah. to the priest and it's definitely not the 30th. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You, do you know what you don't know what date it is? No. No. And she's let us book them tickets. Thelma has turned away other potential bookings and already made travel arrangements, so the false wedding date could cost her thousands of pounds. Most of the times, if we're not going to dress them, we go, we don't want to know the date and we don't want to know where it is, and then nobody can ever say, well, it was you that told us or whatever. So we don't want to know. But when they're asking us to go over and dress the girl, you know, which is, it's not down the road, it's not, you know, round the corner somewhere. We've got to actually book. Uh, it's just out of order to do something like that. Were they going to leave us sitting in a hotel room or tell us the day before? You just don't know. And it just makes you so angry, you know, that, you know, I'm not a die-hard, you know, traveller support. I'm not saying that. But I do stick up for them all the time. It makes you angry. You know, we worked really hard to make sure that it was perfect for her. And yet they can't even give us the right date. God, I'm so angry. I just, I'm going to have to phone her. Tell you what, Mary, I was right, wasn't I? I was right. I knew, I knew it wasn't on that day. I knew it wasn't. Dressmaker Thelma has worked for years gaining the trust of the travelling community. I feel like, you know, you've shit on me, basically. Having arranged to travel to Northern Ireland, she has just learned that the bride's mother appears to have lied to her about the wedding date. Pauline said, yeah, we're booking the tickets now to come over. Why didn't you tell us then? You're afraid of what? I'm afraid now because I've lost out. I've, all that money I've paid for tickets and hotels. Also, you've took the underskirts, Mary, and you knew that that wedding wasn't until then. We've got other weddings to do, you know, by the 20th. If you don't get, if we don't get the underskirts back, Mary, you'll owe us two grand by the time that comes because it's £100 a day extra. On the, we give you a week. You know, I'm going to lose out, Mary, and I'm not going to do it. All these girls have worked their bollocks off here to get it done for you for that day. And all I can say is you've lied to me right the way along the line. So how can I trust you? Do you know what I mean? Hey, 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 blah, 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 blah. don't be turning this round on me. Please believe me, I am not going to lose out on this. I've worked with travellers too long and I am not going to lose out on this. Are you upset? No. God. <laughs> Sometimes it just gets you, you feel a bit hurt more than anything, a bit like... Why hasn't she trusted me when all the others do? And you do feel hurt. You, you know, you, you feel like I've put as much effort as we possibly can into this to make it perfect for them. And that's obviously why they come to us, because that's what we do. We do it well. And they've just... <clears throat> she's basically just kicked us in the teeth, really, and lied to us, where... Well, I'd call it a lie, where they probably wouldn't call it a lie. You know, that's... You, they're used to being like that. They wouldn't look on it like I'm looking on it. They wouldn't be upset about it because they wouldn't look that they were lying to us at all. They would look at that as they're protecting themselves. That's what they're doing. After being challenged about deceiving Thelma, the family decided they didn't want their wedding to be filmed. <laughs> Having to be secretive about wedding plans is an added worry for all traveller girls approaching their big day. 19-year-old Irish traveller Bridget is getting married next week, and she too has had problems booking a venue. Three got cancelled. Really? Three of them? Mm. It's not right at all, really, is it? Is that because they found out you're a traveller? Yeah. Cousin Elizabeth and her family have been helping to secure a venue. The 
could pay the deposit and the, when he went to pay the full money, he handed the money straight back into his hand. He said, we can't do business with you. <laughs> That's well bad, isn't it? I don't think they could do that. Yeah, they can. Do you have this problem quite a lot with things? Do you? Yeah. Do you know if they just stopped and just get to know us and stop, like, instead of putting us down so low and just to stop and to have a talk or things like that, to, to realise then we're not, like, bad people or anything. We're just people yeah. We're just normal, day. like everyone yeah. else, do you know what I mean? But you don't look at it that way. Does this um, venue mean that you're travellers? No. No. Say if they found out tomorrow, would they cancel it? Yeah. It's not something you would be worried about on your wedding day, is it really? Will the venue be right? Best friends since childhood, the girls have experienced plenty of racism growing up. <laughs> they called you jippos and they looked at you, oh, you gypsy, scum, this way, that way. Call you all, all names for nothing and they don't... How can they, how can they judge you when they don't know you? I mean, it's hard to say something, like, chuck you out and if you go into places and whatever. For what? They don't give you a reason because you're, you're travelling no tra and signs on the, bo uh, on, on the door. Before you go to the no travellers allowed. That's not one traveller, that's all travellers. As the best woman, Elizabeth is accompanying Bridget to see their dresses for the first time. Thelma has had to put the frustrations of the last traveller wedding behind her and concentrate on her next customers. I mean, this friendship between these two girls goes back a long way. They're not just cousins, they are best friends as well. The bride herself doesn't seem to have as much say as what Elizabeth has. She, she basically tells you exactly what she wants. And I don't think she's even interested in the bride's dress as long as her dress is OK. Right, come on, come on in here. What do you think, Bridges? Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> That's yours, Elizabeth, That's over there. Thanks for your hands. Thanks for your arms. When Bridget is married, Elizabeth will not be able to spend nearly as much time with her best friend. Me and Bridget to be friends now, we're the closest out of all friends, but obviously she's getting married to a boy. And that's like, that's the, a different closeness. She always just say that, um, I don't get married till you get married. And you're going to get married before me. And I said, no, I'm not. You're going to get married before me. And she was, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And it was her. So I was right. You're getting nervous now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> now you look like a bride. Nice. Piece de resistance now. Oh, God, this is gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, the back's fabulous. Oh, oh, Take it off now, and I have to leave it on. It's just shocked and surprised. How nice to come out. I'm so happy now. With the dresses perfect, all they have left to worry about is the wedding venue and what to wear at the Hindu. Close to me face. <laughs> Getting ready for a night out squeezed into a caravan with a faulty generator is second nature to these girls. <laughs> Where have the disco on here? Flashing lights. There won't be no hen light if she don't hurl up, them, so I'm going to make that. The strict rules of married life within the travelling community mean Elizabeth wants to give Bridget a night to remember. When she's married, she's not going to be able to do this. She can't quite like without her husband and with her friends or single girls or anything like that. So um, just hope she has like a really good time because it's like the last time she can do that. Because when you're married, you're making the commitments and you can't just go off with your single friends and like you can't go to discos or anything like that without your husband. And that's just the way it is. You like it? It's wrong. Well. <laughs> <laughs> With another friend, Birdie, squeezed into the shower cupboard. Bridget's younger brother, Larry, doesn't entirely approve of the outfits. The holy show. Huh? What color are you wearing? The 
Why are you meant to wear one of them for? Because it's bright to be. So what, take it off now? No, you won't. Take that off your leg now. <laughs> no, but not at all. That's what I'm supposed to wear. Hold it short, take it off. No, you're supposed to wear it. No, you're not meant to put it on. Yeah, you are. It's too straight now, take it off. No, not small. I won't Despite her younger brother's objections, the girls head off to one of Swindon's premier night spots. Bridget's marriage will mark a turning point in her relationship with best friend Elizabeth. She wants to do this. This is her decision. And obviously she's happy. But I'm happy for her as well. I really am. But it's just like, I don't know. It's, I'm just, I hope just she just don't change. So. They're like being friends and things. I just hope that don't change. After 10 days on the road, Romany Gypsy John is making his final approach to Appleby Fair, as thousands of gypsies and travellers descend from all over the world. A popular spectacle for visitors from the Settle community, this sleepy Cumbrian town has been transformed into the largest gypsy horse fair in the world. For centuries, travellers have gathered here to shop, socialise and trade in horses. In the past, gypsy horse fairs have been banned by the authorities, but for fair organiser Billy Welsh, Appleby is sacred turf. We don't get classed as citizens in our own country, so we don't really feel that we belong anywhere, but we feel that we belong here. When we meet here and gather here once a year, this place is sacred to us. As long as, long as there's a planet Earth, it will exist, because we, we'll, they'll never get rid of this one. We wouldn't allow it. We would literally lay our lives down for it. It's that important to us. At last year's fair, the police made over 100 arrests for offences ranging from public disorder to selling counterfeit goods. This year, the police have tightened their control on the whole fair, and some travellers are becoming aggravated. This place everywhere. They're everywhere. Just pushing people around, that's what they're doing. And was it the same last year? No, no, no. It's never been like this in all my lifetime. I've never heard tell of anything like it. Never. They do have rules to try and keep the streets clear and things like that. Obviously, if there's any kind of violence or anything going on around the pubs, the police is there to arrest people. It's a very good thing. We welcome the police to come here. We need the police to come here to keep everything at peace. But nobody's not asking the police to come and harass them over who they are. Are we chickens or are we dogs? Yes, Has anybody ever seen before a public house with a wire mesh up to the windows? Come back, lads. People's been treated like animals. Ian. Would you just like to tell us, why is these wire meshes up at the windows? Surely and simply to stop drink going out through the windows, because it's supposed to be drank on the premises and not outside. So last night, I said people getting a glass of beer like that yes. and walking out onto there, yeah. and the police was ripping it out of the dance and chucking it in some big bins over there, then blue bins over there. That's is correct. that not correct? And I know you were stood here last night. How many yes. arrests did you see last night? Could you several, put a number click? Several. several. Yes. Can I make one point? Yes. In your favour. Yes. The majority of the travelling community are decent, law abiding, and I've never met such interesting people in my life. That's correct. But there, is a, there is a small minority. Yes. Did he say law abiding? Go on, go on. Small okay. minority. That's correct. That we would rather. That you would uh, rather not say. to do with probably, the community. Probably the same with every yeah. country of people. Yeah. Things are also starting to heat up for bride to be Bridget. Is it the same as that? It's the night before her wedding, and some of her guests have just been thrown out of a nearby hotel for being too loud. 
have one was getting shut out. All the children, everything in the pajamas, getting fired around, all over the children making noise. No you way. Yeah. Young nephews and nieces getting fired out to, to know before we wouldn't. Shocking and deep shocked. Of all days for it to happen, I wouldn't care if it was any other day because we're used to this. But I never did talk like it happened a night before we went. The following morning, while the evicted guests do their best to get ready back at her site, Bridget is being transformed into a bride by Thelma and Pauline. How do you feel anyway? Do you feel nervous now or do you feel... So, like... Oh, shaky. Yeah. Meet your wedding day. This is like the biggest day of your life, isn't it? Yeah, I know. While Bridget will be gaining a husband, Elizabeth fears she'll be losing a best friend. This is the end of an era, isn't it? She don't care anyway. She does. Look at her. Look at her face. <laughs> She's usually laughing, giggling, bubbly. Look at her face. She does care. Yeah, shiny face. He's still going to be, like, obviously going to be friends. Are you going to see each other as much? No. No. Bridget's fairy tale wedding has a classic Cinderella theme, with a modern twist on the pumpkin carriage. pink bridesmaid colour scheme was chosen by best woman Elizabeth. Half the time I think she thinks she's the groom because she's had so much input into this wedding. Probably even, even more than what Bridgie's had. The real groom, like many traveller men, has chosen not to be identified. Married Bridget has one more hurdle to overcome. The reception venue still don't know that it's a traveller wedding. And cake maker Jill is worried that the unusual choice of wedding cake may raise suspicions. As you can see, it's big. Big and in your face. I'm a bit wary about it as well because they don't know the travellers. Once they, they see the size of the cake, because it's obviously like an ordinary country person's wedding, it's just a little goes on a small table in the corner. Once they, I start asking for a 12-foot table, um, if I, I haven't already got one, then it's a bit of a giveaway. Nobody's going to say, where's the cake, are they? <laughs> the cake might not be the only giveaway of their traveller identity. Will you get in, buddy? What's before? I think as soon as they roll up and they see the dresses and, and the outfits that they'll know that they are travellers and um, whether it sets alarm bells ringing, I, I don't know. Get up off, please get up off. I'm not on your floor. You are, I'm right on you. Don't save the table. Okay. 19 year old newly married Bridget is about to have her wedding reception at a local golf and bowling club. Unsure of how their traveller identity will go down with the venue, they're trying to be low-key. Although a few heads are turned, nobody has any complaints. She was very worried about her venue cancelling. And um, obviously we got here, the people's very, very nice. 
and you can tell that it's just a relief, like a pressure off her brain that everything's gone so well and everything turned out right the way she wanted it. She's getting married, you jackass. She's married, you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing their friendship will never be the same again, Elizabeth has planned to have a last dance with her best friend. You can just see how close they are, you know, they're going to miss each other, you know, they like singing to each other, and no one interfered, they just let them, let them get on with it. But, you know, it'll be Elizabeth soon anyway, so. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Back at Appleby Horse Fair, the tighter police controls are causing growing discontent. I saw a policeman on horse and he was harassing one man. And when the man walked off, he kept following him. And he picked on one man in the car park and threatened to arrest him. People are being singled out on this fair. They're doing it because we're gypsy people and the travelling people that's on here as well. So it's happening to everybody. Hello. Fair organiser and gypsy spokesperson Billy Welsh decides enough is enough. If I've got to, if I've got to, round everybody up yeah. and get everybody for backup, you'll come with me, won't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? We all want the same thing. News travels fast through the encampment. Gypsies and travellers are to unite and march on the police headquarters. Listen, listen. But there's concern the protest might get out of hand. There's going to be, there's going to be media there, the BBC, Channel 4. Show them that we're respectable, honourable, proud people who can be trusted. Don't be provoked by nobody. Keep your hands down your side and march in silence. The march will go from Appleby Hill down to the town where the police operations centre is based. We want to make a formal protest on behalf of our people we'll for the harassment and abuse that we've suffered this week on the stair. Horses are released from their tethers to give an extra show of force. Hey, how many people do you think are coming down now? God knows. Thousands. You can see the road's, the road's full. The police has caused this. They're arresting, They're arresting everybody. I'm arresting For any reason at all that they can think of. They're just grabbing all young lads and handcuffing them and taking them and locking them up. Move the corner, lads. Before confronting the police, Billy makes one more plea for a peaceful protest. We're going, we're going into the police station now. Everybody, all these residents, all these people in this town, is behind us. They're all on our side. All the Gorgia people and all the local people in Appleby Fair. So let's show them some respect, because they're back on us. Stand here and show them what gentlemen we can be. Let us have four of us, No, I'm sorry. Well, we've, only, we've got three now. You have four. Have four. We have four. Of us. Four. Of us. No, that's no. again. Shush. 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 We want, we want a peaceful fair and we want people to have the liberty to come down here and do what they've been doing for hundreds of years. My father, his father and great-grandfather. Eventually, Billy returns with news. We've slaughtered it. We'll see, the have of the promise. We're going to change the ways. All the press is in the world's all here. Well, we'll see today and tomorrow if they can find it in, in the... 
they find it possible to act like human beings and treat us like human beings. So come on, let's get back up the hill. Come on, Cumbria police denied that they discriminate in their policing, but acknowledged that although the local community were satisfied with them, there had been a fractured relationship between the police and the gypsies and travellers this year. They said they have no intention of closing down the fair and that they want to rebuild relationships with the traveller community. I promise me faithfully they're going to sort it out. One of the headmen is going to come and see me in a couple of hours, come to my home personally, have a cup of tea and we're going to talk it through and try and get back to what we used to be. We've got a proper fair, police by proper policemen. There used to be, used to be a good police force, these gentlemen. We're proud and honourable people and we won't put up with it. For the travelling community, it's a small victory in their ongoing battle to feel accepted by the rest of the world.